And I've got both J.P. Morgan and Sakjen to my left. So, uh, so very traditional, long-standing firms that have leaned into this trend uh, quite heavily. So, Dennis, maybe if you have anything to add on the definitions, but if I think about democratization and giving investors access to virtually any asset class out there, I think this is going to be a very innovative advancement. Yeah, I mean, I, I would start by just adding on to, to what Anthony said. So, as J.P. Morgan, sitting in the U.S., um, we are very much on the, the private permissioned end of the spectrum today. And so we get the question a lot of times, like why even do this on a blockchain network? Like can't you just do this with a database or using like your, your real-time payment setup? And for us, you know, we do see a future where a public blockchain fully realizes its, poten its potential. And so the way that we look at the world is like, let's build use cases today using this technology, using Solidity, which is Ethereum's programming language. And from time to time, we do these experiments where we can deploy what we built onto public blockchains to ensure that we're doing it in a way that should the time come where we eventually want to migrate, we can do so in a pretty smooth manner. And so that's kind of our approach is this kind of building in parallel piece where we start with a use case that is not necessarily dependent on having this huge network effect upfront, but things like our digital financing application or intraday repo application as it's sometimes called, where you want it to work. And how does it work? One, it works because it's a shared ledger where everyone can see the same information. But the other, probably more important piece, is that you have multiple kinds of assets sitting on the same set of infrastructure, which doesn't happen today. And so this idea that you can have a token representing a treasury or high quality liquid asset, and JP Morgan can lend against that with down to the minute precision, is kind of revolutionary. And we're finding a lot of interest as far as different types of uh, actors that want to use this intraday borrowing facility with the precision that they get from it. And if I'm a client of, of, uh, of JP, are there benefits to buying this asset on-chain versus off-chain? Because it sounds like you're putting some traditional assets on the blockchain. Yeah, I mean, for us right now, the use cases are focused on, on utility. What can you do with this asset? And so what we do today is, you know, we connect to tri-parties and we link them in. Uh, we link their clients' accounts in that hold these large amounts of treasuries. We will immobilize them in place. We'll issue a token against it to be able to issue, it's called JPM coin, it's our form of on-chain cash, against these particular assets. And the reason we're doing that is to give this kind of precise form of lending. And we have other applications as well, which I'm happy to get into, but that's, um, that's an example of, in our opinion, like the true power of tokenization is just as much about the utility that you get from this asset as it is like being able to access the investment itself. And uh, Charles, uh, a similar business line, different set of regulations, different part of the world. What's Sakchen's uh, take on, on where we are with yeah, blockchain? Yeah, so, so we started uh, like five or six years ago issuing the first assets on Ethereum, the public blockchain. Uh, so from day one, we started and we, we chose a public blockchain. We, and we, we've been pretty vocal about that, saying, you know, um, this should be like the, the gold standard for everyone. Of course, regulation in different countries prevent us from doing you know, everything we would like to do. Um, but despite using Ethereum public blockchain, and as Anthony said, we kind of developed our own hybrid model. Uh, of course, we don't want uh, structured products or bonds, uh, you know, transferred to any kind of wallet uh, the, uh, throughout the world. So we, we did develop our own framework uh, to kind of develop the permissioned uh, access to our assets. Um, and so we started with bonds, with structured products. And one of the missing piece that we had at the time was how to settle these assets uh, on chain and have the full on chain experience. So of course we looked at the, the stable coins that are readily available on the market. None of them was, I would say, uh, okay for us from a bank uh, perspective, meaning in terms of transparency, regulation, uh, what recourse you have over these assets and stuff like that. So that's why we came up with our own stable coin as well on Ethereum to allow for that, I would say, full on chain experience. Um, we do have some and very interesting discussions with our regulators. Um, so in Europe, we had the opportunity to launch this using Ethereum because from the early days on in France, the law recognized that the use of a blockchain was allowed to issue securities and to register ownership of securities. Um, that's something that is still missing in most of the most other parts of the world. Um, and even today, we are still discussing with our regulators regarding how do we make sure that you can you know, validate the transactions on the network that you don't really control? We do have um, BCBS guidelines that you know, uh, put a focus on public blockchains, and maybe we'll, we'll get back to that a, a bit later. 
but I would say our stake, our position is that public blockchains are or should be the, the way to go. But you know, in the meantime, and you know, time for us to, to get there, we are also ready to use private chains. This will really depend on you know where the clients and customers are comfortable with you know being active. Um, the last thing that I will add is that on um, public blockchains, uh, we could use as well uh, the the fact that we can educate our customers. Meaning, um, you know, we started on Ethereum, and you know, custodying or receiving our our bond or structured product issued on Ethereum is really the same experience of, of receiving the Ethereum crypto assets. So for clients that wanted to start with, I would say, safe assets, bonds, securities, it was a way for them to test and to try out and to try public chains before moving to more exotic or, or, or risky assets. And just a quick follow-up on regulation. So certainly here in the US, I would not exactly describe the SEC's relationship with the industry as friendly when it comes to digital assets. Is it a little bit more cooperative in the EU? Um, well, in the EU, we now have a proper regulation over crypto assets, which is called still. MICA. Um, so we are a, a few months ahead of the curve. Um, in the US, we, we do see some initiatives on public chains. Uh, we saw um, you know, commercial papers issued a few weeks ago on, uh, on Ethereum. So, so we do see some initiatives, but as Annie said, most of the banks here are looking at private chains, of course.